All right. So, um, for one, I wanted to do this 2023 mindset webinar because I did one last year and um, I wasn't going to do one this year. Like, I I don't know. I was like um, just kind of going up with my year and stuff and thinking about January, but I was in a shower and the Lord spoke to me. He was like, um, I need you to do another one. Like, I, I want you to do another um mindset 2023 mindset webinar to prepare people um mentally spiritually and give them something to, something to think about and so i want to come on here and share with you guys what the lord has been speaking to me about um that he wants me to take into 2023 and if you in here i don't know he might want to speak to you about these same things so um Yes, yeah, let's get into it. So I remember last year, or was it the year before, but I heard a pastor say, um, it will be your best year if it is your best year spiritually. And that stuck with me because I really believe it. Like if you, if it's your best year spiritually, everything else will flow. Um, when you seek first the kingdom of God, all his righteousness and everything else, it will be added onto you. And that's why if you don't do anything this year, um, make sure that you are building and strengthening your relationship with God. And so I was reading the book of Revelation a few, maybe last week or the week before that. And I was in Revelation chapter three and something in there stuck with me. And it, I actually can read it to y'all now. So it was Revelation chapter three, um, verse, we're going to start with verse two. So it say, wake up, strengthen what little remains, for even what is left is almost dead. I find that your actions do not meet the requirement of my God. Go back to what you heard and believe that first. Hold firmly to it. Repent and turn to me again. If you don't wake up, I will come to you suddenly as unexpected, as a thief. So, and I'm reading out of the New Living Translation. But that spoke to me. Um, the fact that I have to go back and strengthen the areas in my life that remain. Like the areas that I feel like I fall short in. Um, and for me, the areas that I need to strengthen is, for one, my eating habits. I have a bad, like, I I have to literally be conscious of what I'm putting in my body. How am I taking care of the temple that God blessed me with? Um, another area that the Lord has been revealing to me that I need to strengthen is my productivity. Um, I definitely have struggled with and I, I do not um, come in agreement with it no more, thank God. <laughs> but I used to be lazy, like just lazy, um, not productive in my calling, not productive in just my day-to-day -day life. Another area is um, money management, budgeting, get it, sticking to a budget, being serious about that because financial stewardship is important. Um, we are to be, get, to be good stewards over what God has blessed us with and other areas that I need to strengthen is my rest, getting good rest at night. Um, don't be up so late, go to sleep. Like, um, so that way I can be productive and also exercising and also spending more time in the word of God, watching more sermons, um, reading my Bible more and things like that. And so I want to encourage you to ask God to show you what areas in your life do you need to go back and strengthen? And also in Revelation, it say we must go back to what we heard and believe that first and hold firmly to it. And I remember I had a dream and I woke up and this, this was like this month, earlier this month or the end of last month. But um, I woke up and the first thing was on my mind was, oh, let me admit, but the first thing that was on my mind was, um, 
go back to the root. And I was like, God, like, what does that mean? Like, go back to the root. And then when I read Revelation chapter three, it made sense to me. Like, I need to go back to the root. I need to go back to what I first held firmly to. What are the things in your life that you held so firmly and close to your heart and that you were diligent in, but you have slacked off? And I really believe that that's what the Lord is encouraging us to do. Um, you know, starting now, like strengthen those areas and also um, strip off every weight that slows you down. And that's actually a Bible verse that I want to pull up to share with y'all in case anybody wanted to pull it up on their end. So let me pull it up. Let me see. Strip off every weight. Um, give me one second. Hebrews chapter 12. Let me make sure that's the right verse. Hebrews chapter 12. Yes. So Hebrews chapter 12. Let me put it on a new living translation. Okay, Hebrews chapter 12, verse, um, let's see, verse 1. Therefore, since we are surrounded by a huge crowd of witnesses to the life of faith, let us strip off every weight that slows us down, especially the sin that so easily tripped us up. And let us run the endurance, the race God has set before us. So in Hebrews chapter 12, verse 1, it's basically saying like, we are to strip off every weight, every weight in our life that is slowing us down, that especially the sin that trip us up so easily, so we can run our race, our endurance um, that God has set before us. And that really spoke to me because... I remember um, like the end of last year, yep, the end of last year, I had let go of a four-year on and off relationship. And that was the best thing I could have done for myself was to strip off that weight. Think about your life. What are the weights that are slowing you down? What are the weights that are causing you to backslide back into sin, back into um, things that God has called you away from, um, what is hindering you? And in 2023, or even just starting now, like, I want to encourage you to be diligent and letting those weights go and not feeling like you have to do it on your own. You don't have to do it on your own strength. Um, God wants to help you live a life that's pleasing to him. Um, so it can be anything. It can be a mindset thing. It can be laziness. It can be a relationship. It can be a friendship. It can be eating habits. It can be financial management. It can be exercise. It can be so many different things that can be slowing you down on this walk with God. And if you ask God to reveal it to you, he will, <laughs> he will. And, um, I also want to encourage you guys to, um, strive towards spiritual maturity. And this is something God has revealed to me recently. Like, Kanaya, I want you to step out of kindergarten faith, like, or kindergarten understanding. I want you to mature spiritually. Like, I don't want you to give in to the, to the ways of the enemy so easily. Um, like as soon as the enemy want me to be lazy today, then I'm easily giving in. It's like, no, like you got to fight to win. You got to, I want you to grow up spiritually and use the authority that we have as believers. And um, it's so good because I was um, doing Bible study yesterday and I actually want to get my notebook because it was like, I have the armor of God. Like, hold on, I want to go read it to you because it was so good. <laughs> So, um, y'all, so I was reading in Ephesians chapter six, verse 11 through 17. 
And it was basically saying like, we have to put on all of God's, all of God's armor so that we will be able to stand firm against the strategies of the devil. And um, the armors of God, um, it talks about it in Ephesians chapter six, verse 11 through 17. But essentially it's um, truth, righteousness, peace from the good news, faith, and the word of God. And when you are so strengthened in the word of God, you know what God say about you. You know what God don't say about you. You have your armor of God on. You know um, the truth about who God is and who God has called you to be. Um, you have peace from him. You, you, you walk in faith. It's like you will be able to stand strong against any plans or any attacks of the enemy. And I was so grateful that I came across that yesterday because I don't have to give in to the devil. I don't have to give in to the enemy. I don't have to give in to distractions, to hindering spirits, to to um, tormenting spirits, to all these different spirits of distractions and all this other stuff because I have the armor of God on and I'm in my word. And I want to encourage you to, um, if you don't have a Bible, get you a Bible. Or if you do have a Bible, um, read your Bible, make it a priority to read your Bible more often to set you a, even if you have to schedule, set you a schedule, like, Hey, I'm going to read my Bible in the morning and at night, or, you know, do what works best for you. But it's so important for us to know the word of God. So when the adversary try to come and all these replicas and all these distractions and all these plans of the enemy try to come. You know the word of God. You standing on your faith. You like no, this is like when finances start looking funny. You like no, the word of God say I am the head and I'm I am the head and never to tell. I am above and never beneath. I will lend and not need to borrow if I obey the commandments of God. Like that's in Deuteronomy, I believe chapter twenty eight. It talks about the blessings um, when you are obedient, and then the curses for disobedience, and um. So whenever the enemy try to make you look at your situation as something different than what God wanted you to look at the situation, you're like, no, yeah, finance is looking a little, mm, but I'm the head and never the tail. I'm above and never beneath. This is just a season. My breakthrough is on the way. <laughs> so you're able to look at your, you're able to find a new sense of joy in that season. And um in Romans chapter 5, verse 3, Romans chapter 5, verse 3, it say, rejoice when we run into problems and trials, for we know that they help us develop endurance. So the stuff that you went through in 2022, even 2021, the stuff that you went through, that that rejoice. Because when you when you ran into those troubles, that's helping you. That's helping you build endurance. Um, and I just want to encourage you guys to, for one, go back to those areas in your life that God had already revealed to you that you need to work on, or God has already made clear to you that you, you need to be diligent in this area. Go back to that and be like, okay, God, I'm going to stand firm in this. And something that the Lord has been, um, reminding me of is my generosity because, um, and 2020 and 2021, I was like very, I was very diligent in being generous, like giving and stuff like that. But um, I kind of took a step back from giving and stuff. And God like, no, like I need you to go back and strengthen that area. Um, and like I told y'all earlier, the food, the what I eat, productivity, um, money management, getting good rest, exercising, and being in the Word, like reading my Bible, watching sermons, and things like that. And one of the final things that God has been speaking to me about is making sure that when it comes down to my business, I'm not being lazy, but I'm working as if I'm working unto the Lord. Like anything you do, that's actually a Bible verse. Which is why, oh my God, it's so important to be in the Bible. Like read, read your Bible because 
it's so much wisdom in here literally it's so much wisdom in the bible but um yeah so ephesians chapter six it says serve people as you would serve christ um do the will of god with all of your heart and it also talks about like you know just serving and working and being diligent in that which is an area that the lord has revealed to me that i need to stay diligent don't get lazy don't get slack concerning your purpose um, when you first started your business, think about how hard you were working, how how consistent you were, how 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 focused you were. Like the Lord wants you to go back to that. Don't let the enemy come in and try to make you lazy, try to make you um, slack off, try to make you complacent or like. Um, yeah, try to make you complacent. Now, content, content, content is different than being complacent. The Lord never called us to be complacent, but he did say we should be content with whatever we have. But complacent is different. Um, but yeah, so that's what the Lord put on my heart to share with you guys. And if y'all have questions, like I want to know. Um, and if you just joined in or if you joined in late, this will come with a replay. So you can um, catch back on what we talked about in the beginning. But um, let me know, do y'all have any any questions? Um, and thank you, Branded by AP. Let's see. She said, can you talk more about generosity? I feel led by God to give, but I'm nervous because of my financial situation. Oh, thank you so much for answering, asking this question. Whew. So generosity. So, okay, I'm going to be honest. I was a very, yeah, excuse my hair. I was a very stingy person um, before 2020. Um, I held my money in my hands like this for one, because I didn't have a lot of money. Like I didn't have a lot of money in the first place. And two, I always thought like, hey, if I give, I'm going to go without. Um, I wouldn't tip people. I would... And it's crazy because I thought that would help me keep my money, but it formed like a scarcity mindset in me. And God didn't end up blessing me with more money until I started giving what I had. So um, anyway, so in 2020, the Lord had placed it on my heart to give what I had. Like um, I, was, I was actually on a fast, which is something I highly encourage every single one of y'all to do go on a fast a three-day fast ask god what he wants you to fast from and um allow him to speak to you but anyway so in 2020 i went on a fast and the lord revealed to me that i am selfish essentially like i need to give i need to be generous and he gave me specific instructions on who to give to and so um i did it and when i tell you like when i did it it wiped my bank account clean like did it yeah i just about <laughs> and what that did was god was like okay now i can trust her with more because god don't bless you just for it to stay with you he bless you so you can give to others so anyways i did what god told me to do or he placed it on my heart to do and god just started making a way like more just started coming um and when you give, you never have to worry about if it's going to come back or not, because the word of God does not return void. Like go in your Bible and read what it say about giving. Like um, God is going to repay you. God is going to give to you. And also, um, with, OK, I'm about to read your, your comment, T Tiana. But um, when it comes down to giving, it's like a muscle. If you don't give with the little you have, you won't give when you have a whole lot. And God want to see, okay, can I trust her when with this little before I trust her with a lot? So um, I want to encourage you to ask God, like, hey, God, how much do you want me to give? And it might hurt. I'm going to be honest. It might be like, oh, it's hurt. Like, <laughs> but 
it's a muscle and, and it softens your heart. It changed how you look at money because money can be up one day, money can be down. And, and God supplies you with everything you need. And if God gave you that money, how much you, how much more do you think he can give you? Like, but yes. Um, okay. Let's see. She said, I'm in a place where I've been too generous and people have taken advantage to where I was taking losses. How do I keep being generous put in these types of situations? Yes, yes, yes. Oh my God. Okay, so I actually got a Bible verse about that. Yes, y'all. Yeah, loving the question. Thank you, God. Okay. So and anybody who is who is in the same boat as Tiana, they feel like they are too generous. They've been taken advantage of, which God calls us to guard our heart as well. And in 2 Corinthians chapter 8, um, in verse, what verse is this? 11. Whatever you give it to me and give. Okay. So, okay. In verse 11, and I'm going to go to the part that I highlighted, which you can read the whole verse. But it's a give in proportion to what you have. Whatever you give is acceptable if you give it eagerly and give according to what you have, not what you don't have. Of course, I don't mean your giving should make your life easy for others and hard for yourself. So when you give, for one, God looks at the heart posture. And if you're giving, um, like don't 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 make your life hard um and then easy for others which is said in second corinthians chapter 11 and also when it comes down to that like ask god for discernment like hey god like i feel used by others um i feel like uh, i'm too generous like can you help me with having discernment and balance on what you want me to give and sometimes like there has been times where i gave and it did make my life hard um so it can be easier for others but that was because god was trying to move me in faith like and he restored me 20 times up like 30 times more than what i gave like so Whew, I would say ask God for discernment on that. And um, let's see. Oh, that's good. Those who gather a lot had nothing left over. And those who gather only had a little enough. I encourage y'all. Yes, y'all. Read 2 Corinthians chapter 8. She said, how do you become more productive slash have better time management? I know that God has given me the vision and tactics to grow my business. However, I'm struggling with completing all my tasks due to being overworked at my job but leads to being exhausted when I get home. So let me tell you something. And that's a great question because one thing about it, like in those seasons of, of like um, sewing and what I mean by sewing is like you're working towards building what God has called you to build. Um, it's not going to be easy. So I want you to expect to be exhausted. I want you to expect to feel like, oh, I'm tired. I just want to lay down. Because one thing the enemy wants you to do, he don't want you to get what God has called you to. And um, I remember being in that same exact season where I would go to school. No, first I would go to work. And then I would get off of work, have to go to school. Um, and then I would have to still work on my business because I was in the sewing phase. I was in the building phase. I was in the obedient, like just trying to do what God has called me to do. And I was tired. Um, very tired, very, very tired, feeling worn out and stuff. But I want to encourage you to get through this season. Because for one, seasons change. <laughs> You got a season to sow, meaning to work, to, to do what God's called you to do. You got your reap your reaping, you got your harvest season. Like I would say get through, get through the season. And when it comes down to being more productive and having better time management, I recommend putting yourself on a very, 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 very 
strict and direct schedule. From this time to this time, you do this. From this time to that time is for this. Be very strict with yourself. Hold yourself accountable and ask God, be like, hey, God, I, I can't do it on my own. I can't manage my time on my own. I can't be productive on my own. I need your help, God. Like, I'm struggling in this area and he going to help you. He going to speak to you. He going he gonna to show you what you need to do um, in this season. But um, let's see. I'm in the same place, Kayla. Yes. What has helped you get creative with your business? I'm two years into my business and I'm starting to feel complacent because I feel like I've been doing the same thing and it really doesn't feel new. That's a great question because I'm actually in the same place. Like, so this business, um, it's like at its two and a half year mark. I don't know, but I, I, I got into a season where, and right now I'm literally trying to pull myself or I'm allowing God to pull me out of it. But I got complacent. I wasn't, I was content and I was complacent. God never said be complacent. He just said be content with what you have, whether you have a lot, whether you have a little, be content in everything, in every season. But he never said be complacent. <laughs> so um, I got complacent. I'm going to be honest. Like, um, and I stopped working as much. I stopped putting in as much effort. I stopped showing up as much. And that's the biggest mistake I could have ever made. Um, so when it comes down to getting creative, and I could just share what I'm learning in this season, is to go back to the root. Like literally what God spoke to me when I woke up that morning. He said, go back to the root. Go back to what you used to do in your business. I used to get up, get ready. Um, have my to-do list ready. I used to be diligent. I used to be like researching stuff about my business. I used to be coming up with different courses and eBooks. And I used to be like talking to God about the business. I used to be like so into it. And God like, I need you to go back to that because I was productive back then. I was, I was diligent back then. I was engaging myself. I was, I wasn't just lazy. Um, I was getting inspired by other creators. I was, when God would give me an idea, I would hop on it like that. Like, go back to, to that. So, I don't know. Hopefully, that helped you. But that's what I'm literally doing in this season. Because I'm literally in that season right now where I'm going back to the root. Going back to what I once were doing. Um, and also, asking God to help you restore your zeal. Be like, hey, God, I need you to help me restore my inspiration for this business. Um, What do you want me to change? What do you want me to do? What do you want me to learn? How? What do you want me to do right now? Um, Because at the end of the day, we can't do this stuff without God. I'm going to be honest. I tried it. It didn't work. <laughs> I tried it and it did not work. Yeah, that's what's helping me with my creativity is going back to what I used to do and also um, asking God. And he get in just like that. See, God is so, oh, he's so faithful because like soon as I, I made up in my mind, I said, OK, God, I'm done. I, I, I'm not. But I'm done with laziness. I'm done with what you give me ideas and I'm just letting them fly past my head. Like, and as soon, just like that, he gave me an idea. Told me what I needed to do. Still tells me what I need to do. And I'm grateful for that. But, um, yes. Do anybody else have some questions? Hmm. And everybody who joined um, not too long ago, this will come with a replay. So you'll be able to watch it back, watch the very, very beginning and stuff like that. But do anybody else have questions? Oh, she said, when you're creating your goal to 2023, how do you create your action plan? 
Oh, I'm going to be honest. Um, so how do I create my action plan? Honestly, because I think about it a little differently because I like to take stuff day by day. I used to make like vision boards and just have overall goals, no real plans on how to get it accomplished. But now, so for an example, I know I'm for 2023, God is calling me to um, be more productive, for an example. So that means I need a routine for every day to be productive. So I start by planning my day out. Like, okay, what am I going to do today? What am I going to do tomorrow? How am I going to be productive? Um, and for an example, if you know that God is calling you to um, spend more time reading the Bible, having a plan. Okay, what time are you going to read the Bible? How are you going to make this a um, a habit in your life? Um, even with the whole what I eat, like now I'm thinking like I need to make me like a um, like some type of weekly um, what they call it, like a eating. I don't know, like a meal prep type of thing. Like, okay, what am I going to eat? What, what am I not going to eat? Am I going to have cheat days? Just having like a plan behind it and being consistent in that. She said, I love how you send those quotes and Bible verses. It has helped me so much. Uh, amen. Thank you, God. And thank you. That's so good. Yes, do anybody have any other questions? Um, because the main thing that God has been placing on my heart is to strengthen those areas that remain, that are like weak. Even if it's productivity, okay, strengthen it. If it's eating habits, okay, strengthen it. If it's exercising, strengthen it. If it's financial management, strengthen it. If it's generosity, strengthen it. Like strengthen those those little areas because the enemy, he wanna come in and kill, steal, and destroy anything he can. He literally roaming around trying to seek who he can devour. But God said, not my children. <laughs> God said, not my children. So we also have to stand in agreement with the Holy Spirit. Like, okay, like I got you. Like. I got to do my part. I got to be diligent in my part. Devil, you can't have me. The devil can't have y'all. <laughs> he got to get behind us. But yes, y'all. This is great. If y'all don't have any more questions, but like I told y'all, this will be a replay. Um, It has to like download and stuff and get sent to my email and then I have to upload it and stuff. So you, you all might have it tonight. Or you might have the replay tomorrow. Hopefully tonight. Hopefully it don't take too long to download and stuff. But I enjoyed this webinar. Um, and if y'all do have any questions, I'm going to give y'all some time to leave them in the comments. If not, um, I hope y'all enjoy the rest of y'all week. Y'all, this year flew by like that. Like I'm still like, <laughs> it's about to be 2023 already. But remember, it's going to be your best year if it's your best year spiritually. Seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and everything else will be added unto you. It's not a might be added on. It's say it will be added unto you. Period. <laughs> All right, y'all. I'm sorry. I'm just talking because I'm just thinking. But, um... Y'all have a blessed day, a blessed week, a blessed month, a blessed 2023, a blessed Christmas, a blessed day in Jesus name. She said, this has been my validation. Another influencer sent an email this morning speaking the same thing. Thank you. Yes. Amen. Amen. And you are welcome. Merry Christmas. Thank you. And I will talk to y'all later. <laughs>
<laughs> Bye, y'all. Merry Christmas and Happy New Year. Thank you. <laughs> Bye, y'all. Let's see. How do we stop the recording?